ready to reimagine the future of humanity and unlock your true potential. Welcome to Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours, hosted by Dr. David Gruder, an internationally renowned integrative psychologist, human potential expert, author, and social change catalyst, as he delves into the most urgent issues of our time. With the world facing unprecedented challenges and social and political divides growing deeper, it's time to take action. Each episode of this groundbreaking series will empower you with invaluable insights, strategies, and tools to heal these divisions and restore personal freedom and societal well-being. Whether you're a concerned citizen, a courageous leader, an influential figure, or an ambitious entrepreneur, Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours will guide you on a transformative journey. Discover your unique role in creating a brighter future for yourself and society at large. Dr. David Gruder will draw upon his extensive knowledge and experience to provide practical solutions for shaping the world we live in. With his passionate exploration of social change, he will help you navigate through the complexities of our time and inspire you to make a meaningful impact. So, prepare yourself for an eye-opening experience as we delve deep into the heart of the matter. Reimagining humanity's future and yours will challenge your perspectives, ignite your imagination, and equip you with the tools you need to reimagine and redefine the world around you. The time to transform our future is now. Join us on this incredible journey and enter a new era of possibility. For more information on Dr. David Gruder and the Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours, visit www.rhfy.ca. Welcome to Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours, where together, we create a brighter tomorrow. Now, here is the host of Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours, Dr. David Gruder. Well, welcome back to the Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours show. I'm your host, Dr. David Gruder. Tired of boy men, tyrants, or overly sensitive guys? Done with traditional notions of masculinity? Well, in this episode, I'll be having a conversation with my guest, men's work expert Rick Bronick, on mature masculinity in the 21st century. We'll explore three common yet immature versions of masculinity, maybe more versions than that, what's fueling them, and key ingredients in a reimagined vision of healthy masculinity in, uh, that integrates being nurturing and challenging. Stay tuned to discover how we can elevate masculinity to help shape humanity's best future. Rick Bronick has a master's in education and is a renowned leader, speaker, consultant, coach, and multi-best-selling author with a deep understanding of men's needs in today's world. Since 1990, he has facilitated personal growth and leadership workshops for thousands of men across 11 countries and five continents. Rick is a leader and trainer for the Mankind Project, MKP, and has co-created successful multicultural awareness trainings, including Isms and Issues, an introduction to multicultural awareness, and power, privilege, and difference in the workplace. As a sought-after speaker, he shares his wisdom worldwide on the benefits of multicultural awareness in organizations. His latest number one bestseller, Power Tools for Men, a blueprint for healthy masculinity, co-authored with uh, with his uh, colleague Leonard Semanchik, guides men in developing positive, empowered identities. So, welcome to the Imagining Humanity's Future and Yours show, Rick. Thank you, David. What a joy to be with you, my friend, and uh, be talking on this uh, wonderfully important topic. Mm, thank you. I quite agree, and I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Rick, there's clearly a lot of societal confusion these days about what is and isn't mature masculinity, and I'd like us to devote this first episode segment to describing the most common immature versions of masculinity and their negative impacts on men uh, and on those they interact with. So what what challenges and struggles do you see men having within themselves? Well, David, I'd like to start with some statistics that are kind of stunning, actually, that uh -huh. talk about the state of 
mankind, not only in the US, but in the world. And I've had the privilege of leading trainings in many different countries. So I've noticed that the men's, men's issues are the same, no matter what culture they come from, no matter what language they speak, and no matter their race. Um, here, here are some statistics from the US. Uh, there were approximately 800 um, mass shootings def defined by the mass shooting tracker in the United States in 2022, the last year we have full uh, statistics. Of those 70, excuse me, 97.5% were perpetrated by men. 97.5% of mass shootings. 93% uh, of people incarcerated in the United States are male. Um, over 90% of homicides are perpetrated by males. There's three times as many men in uh, treatment for alcoholism as women. Uh, and I could go on and on and on with statistics that point to the crisis of masculinity that's occurring in our culture in the United States and, and I believe across the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that leads to uh, what many, many, many men are locked into what's commonly called the man box, a place <laughs> where we have, where exactly, we have a very limited, um, options of how we can behave as men, how we can interact with the world and interact with each other. We're filled with terror of connecting at a deep level with men because we'll be seen as feminine or weak or gay or fill in the blank with some other pejorative term, seemingly pejorative term, um, that keeps us from experiencing and expressing the full range of our masculinity. And the work that I do, and I, and I know very much in concert with what you're doing, David, is offering men a broader range of experience, a broader range of expression. I don't have to be limited to this very narrow, limited way that we're told we can be as men in the world. And, and those ways lead to um, three, and I, I think there's a fourth, uh, unhealthy expression of masculinity that causing so much damage to other men, and of course, to women and children and society in general. And uh, before you keep going, I just want to let our audience know that we're going to unpack those features you were touching on uh, or referring to a moment ago about healthy versions of masculinity in right. the third segment of this episode. But yeah. uh, keep, keep going. All right. So men have these limited options. And, and like you said, there's th three, maybe I'll, I'll posit a fourth possible way that men respond to that. Let's unpack all of those, yeah. Let's unpack all of those. So the first one that that um, you talked about was the, uh, let me see, I'm gonna put them in the it's, order. Uh, it's on uh, boy men, it's Peter Pan syndrome. Peter Pan syndrome. The, the idea that um, I never have to grow up I could always be a little boy, have people take care of me, have women take care of me in particular, and not have to take my rightful place in the world as an empowered, perhaps mission-driven man and, and make a difference in the world and in my family. That's a general definition of Peter Pan. Hopefully uh, mission-driven, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I know we'll unpack that. And, and the second one is, is you know, the, the exact opposite of that, the, the tyrant, the one, the man who believes that his place is to rule over everything and everybody. And, uh, you know, that leads to a tremendous amount of damage as well. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, that form format for men is um, preached in a lot of our religious practices as well. Um, yeah. And so they are taught from very early on by their religions and their sacred texts and their ministers and their families that this is the right peers. And their peers. This is the rightful place for men, and what that leads is to is, is again a very limited expression for masculinity in those cultures and societies, and a very dominating uh, version that is uh, harmful, in my opinion, to the men themselves yeah. as well as their families. And I view that as an over-energized expression right. of masculinity. It's Absolutely. it's out of balance. It's over-energized. Yep, and both, all of these are actually. And, and, and then the last one is the new age uh, sort of uh, nice guy that, that gives up all of his power and, uh, you know, comes from a perspective of, uh, I, don't, 
I'll, I'll put it in in the most direct terms. I don't need my balls, so I'll just give them away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and uh, uh, interesting because I work, as you know, work with men all over the place, and that is one of the key issues that men want to do. They want to get back their power, which of course is represented by by our balls. Um, yes. and I'm going to posit a fourth one, and that is a man. Before you do, before you do, I just want to comment on the uh, on the oversensitive Mr. Nice Guys okay. types, which I consider to be under-energized masculine. Completely. And uh, the the comment is is self disclosure. I spent a couple of decades in the late 1990s trying to be a new age sensitive guy, mm -hmm. and uh, ended up paying massive prices for having disowned important parts of my masculinity. And I came by it honestly, as all of us men do who, who go in that direction or go in the other direction, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, which was that the role modeling of masculinity that I grew up with was the over-energized, tyrannical version of masculinity. And so not knowing better, I simply rejected that. I threw out the baby with the bathwater and I tried, uh, if I can say it this way, I, I spent a long time trying to be women's best girlfriends. <laughs> how did that work for you? <laughs> yeah, how did that work for me? Not very, very well. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so th this is, uh, I'm, I'm disclosing that because I want our audience to recognize that this is a, a societal problem and that if anyone in our audience is resonating with any of these versions, including the fourth version that you're about to posit, please know you're not alone, that you've got a lot of company and this, uh, this is something simply to be recognized and outgrown. So uh, quickly, what is the, uh, the fourth version? Okay, and, and let me just add this. Nothing that you and I are talking about today is in any way, shape, or form blaming men. Mm -mm. We don't blame men. Men are noble, beautiful, mission-driven, gorgeous human beings when they're given the opportunity. The fourth one that I want to posit is, uh, I'll say, the unconscious man. The one that's so unconscious, he has no clue what masculinity is about. He received no messages. Maybe a father wasn't in, the life, in his life, in his household, whatever, and he just doesn't have any clue about anything about masculinity. Mm hmm. Yes, absolutely. And that uh, that certainly applied to me as well, as I as I mentioned, awesome. I was clueless. So I went with new age sensitive guy. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think you're you're spot on. And, you know, these these expressions of shadow masculine symptoms are clearly creating huge confusion about what healthy masculinity is and they're having devastating impacts on personal relationship and societal well-being and business well-being as well right. so um th this is why i think it's going to be valuable in the next segment after the upcoming break if we spend some time delving into the root causes of why so many men are boy men or tyrants or oversensitive Mr. Nice Guys are simply clueless about what masculinity is. Do you have any, uh, any final thoughts on that before we go to our first break? Well, yes. I mean, it's a deep, deep subject. Well, Isn't briefly, it? because we got to go to break in a minute. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to talk to, to exploring those root causes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so what I want to invite our audience to think about is which of these four forms of, uh, of undeveloped masculinity do you resonate with most? Uh, and do it without shame, without, without blame. Just, uh, you know, it's like uh, I can't solve a problem until I see it. And so this is not about feeling bad. It's about just recognizing, oh, uh, uh, did I fall into the Peter Pan syndrome version of this? Or did I fall into the tyrant over-energized masculine version of this? Or did I fall into the 
oversensitive, Mr. Nice Guy, under, uh, under-energized masculinity version of this? Or have I just been uh, stuck in the mire, un- unclear about what masculinity is? And after we come back from break, we'll talk about root causes of this. Are you ready for a tale that will leave you on the edge of your seat? Get ready to dive into the gripping memoir by Bart Sabrell titled Moon Man. Bart Sabrell takes you on a heart-pounding journey, unmasking the truth behind America's famous Apollo missions. Prepare yourself for hair-raising encounters with agents from the U.S. government's top secret agencies. In Moon Man, Sabrell fearlessly reveals his real-life espionage adventures, shining a light on one of the CIA's best-kept secrets. Brace yourself for shocking revelations, including Sabrell's discovery of privately recorded audio exposing an Apollo astronaut's chilling plot, a plot orchestrated by the CIA. That's right. As Sabrell unveils this groundbreaking evidence, it becomes clear that there is much more to the Apollo missions than meets the eye. Could it be that we've been deceived all along? Moon Man is a gripping page-turner that challenges everything you thought you knew. It's a mind-bending journey into the unknown, where the line between truth and fiction becomes blurred. Don't miss this opportunity to uncover the secrets hidden for decades. Let your curiosity guide you as you join Bart Sabrell on his quest to find the truth. Moon Man, available now at Sibrel.com. That's S-I-B-R-E-L.com. Prepare to have your beliefs shaken to the very core. Welcome back. Before the break, we described some common forms of shadow masculinity and the the harm they're creating. And in this segment, my marvelous guest, Rick Bronick, and I will illuminate root causes of why so many men are stuck in being boy men or tyrants or oversensitive Mr. Nice Guys. So, Rick, what, what do you think are some of those root causes of confusion about what healthy masculinity is and isn't? Well, that's a great question, David. And I think it's a deep question. And I think it starts with the fact that most men from the day they're born are treated in such a way uh, that they begin to shut down important parts of themselves. Uh, I remember uh, when I was hurt as a young child um, and I started to cry because I was in pain. I had physical pain. And my father said to me, "Uh, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. And the message was very clear. Begin to ignore my own body. Begin to ignore my sense of pain. And, my, and the hurt I had around that was all stuff deep down inside. And this process of, of chopping off parts of our humanity uh, happens with our parents. And my mother did the same thing because she, of course, was raised in that same kind of societal milieu. My church, my school, my athletic coaches, all of them begin to um, really attack my sense of who I was as a human being and offer me very limited expression. You know, almost no feelings. Men are allowed to have almost no feelings except maybe anger. And and so we express our everything as anger. You know, I'm, I'm upset, I get angry. I'm hurt, I get angry. I am afraid, I get angry. Even when I'm joyful, I can express it through anger. If you watch sporting events and and men are joyful and they whack each other or high five each other or do chest bumps, it isn't a loving embrace. It's a wham. So, and that limits my expression as a male. And if everything comes out as anger and that's the only way I'm allowed to express myself, then violence becomes an acceptable expression for men, number one. And number two, I'm not allowed to reach out for support from anyone else. Men have to be self-sufficient. We don't ask for help. Asking for help is a sign of weakness, right? Mm -hmm. And so extremely isolated. And I think that's the number one disease that men face in the US and in the world. This profoundly painful, lonely sense of isolation where we have no one who we trust, no one that we feel close to, and, and no one that we can share what's going on within us. 
Mm -hmm. I'd like to unpack some of these things before we go further. So one of the things you said is that we shut down uh, or chop off important parts of ourselves, our body, our feelings, which is spot on. And what Jungian psychology, Carl Jung, an early psychologist, referred to uh, that as is shadow. It's the parts of us that we repress, ignore, deny, or in my opinion, also unjustifiably justify. Right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and we're taught to replace what we've cut off in ourselves with other things. So some of us are taught to misexpress everything we feel as anger. I did the opposite. When I was 16, I was literally word for word saying to myself and to others, I don't do anger because <laughs> the versions of anger that I was exposed to in my family were either shaming, abusive kinds right. of anger or passive aggressive slamming cabinet doors kinds of anger. Right. And because those were the only versions of anger I was exposed to, I cut off my relationship with anger. What did I replace it with? Depression, low self-esteem. Right. Right. Yep. And so what really? accompanies that is isolation that you were referring to, because right. these were my dirty little secrets and I just licked my wounds as a private little victim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and that leads a lot of men. I mean, as you know, a huge population of men in, into alcohol, drug abuse, depression, of course, and other unhealthy behaviors. And none of those, none of those lead to a fulfilled life. <laughs> yes. And not only unhealthy behaviors, but behaviors that look on the surface like they're healthy, like, uh, like um, overachieving, mm -hmm. selling, getting award after award after award. Right. You know, anything can be used for the purpose of anesthesia if that's the intent, even the most wonderful things in the world. Uh, so I, I want our audience to be thinking in terms of, uh, of what, what ways did each of us numb our feelings because we were isolated and because we were shutting down and chopping off important parts of ourselves. There's a wide range of options, options to choose from, including socially approved options. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Are, are there uh, more root causes you can think of in addition to shadow and isolation and anesthesias? Yeah, I think there are. Um, uh, one of the messages we get as men, especially you're in my generation, David, early on, we were subjected to the draft. We were only men were in the arm in the armed forces at that time. Only men were in the line of fire. Um, and we were taught early on that our bodies were not our own that they were, they, they were available to, you know, be shot at, be hurt, be maimed, be killed. And many of the sports, sporting activities that we jump into fully as young men with lots of testosterone are, are activities also that, that potentially can maim, hurt, and kill our bodies. We learn early on. And then when we do have pain, we're given that message that you're not really hurt. I mean, um, my brother broke his foot in a football game in high school, and the coach took a look at it and said, you're not hurt, get back in the game. And to this day, he has um, uh, knee problems and hip problems that resulted from a, a long-time injury that was ignored by his high school football coach under the guise of tough, tough it out, get back in there and do your duty. That kind of thing happens constantly. So the message we get is our bodies don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It's not taken care of. And I'm, I'm not familiar with the term I'm about to use being used widely, but in, in the sports realm that you're talking about, I would consider that to be sports abuse. Yes. And even in professional sports, finally are coming around to the idea that, oh, you can have a, a, a series of concussions and it will lead to lifelong debilitation. Yes. It'll to dementia. So let's take care of that. Back right. in the... Yeah, up until very recent times, that was completely ignored. It was considered mamby pamby or or ridiculous to worry about your future physical well-being. Yeah, you're not a real man unless you can uh, keep 
going and keep hurting yourself once you're injured. And when I said the term sports abuse, I don't want anyone to misunderstand that as a slam on sports. I mm -hmm. think sports are wonderful. I love sports. And any anything, like I was saying earlier, anything can be used for the purpose of anesthesia, if that's the intention. Anything can be used for the purpose of abuse, if that's the intention. So we we get the um, we get training in abusing our bodies through um, denying when we're hurt or injured, uh, or recognizing when we're hurt or injured, but he, having had installed in us this belief that says it doesn't matter if uh, if I'm hurt or injured, I have to keep going anyway. I can't. I'm not allowed to take a time out in order to restore myself before I go back into the game, whatever the game is, if it's sports or if it's business or if it's any other part of life for that matter. Yeah. And even going to the doctor and, and getting physical checkups is uh, uh, anathema to a lot of men because it's it's giving power to the fact that my body has any meaning or any value. I mean, it's, it's stunning how many men don't get regular checkups and then are surprised when they have, you know, difficult medical issues to deal with. Yes. And and not just uh, that kind of giving power, but also the uh, the issue of authority shadow that a lot of us men develop this kind of allergy to anything and anyone that seems like they might have power over us or or who actually does have power over us like an abusive manager or some something like that in a business setting and uh and so this this kind of of um rebellion against authority has some value because because there's authority abuse that goes on right. but when we get caught in rebellion we are actually depriving ourselves of stepping into healthy masculine power absolutely david we deprive ourselves of noticing the authority figures in our life who are healthy and who do things in a good way and who are supportive and may, perhaps mission driven, for example. Uh, if and also I, becoming those people, right? I, because if we develop power allergy, then I don't want to have that power either. So uh, right. it's like I was saying about anger. I was saying uh, as a teenager, I don't do anger. Well, some of us men say the equivalent of I don't do power. Right. And that's as devastating as power abuses. It does. And it comes out of our, most of our father wounds. Many of us had fathers who were either absent or when they were present, they were abusive. They were rageaholics. They were alcoholics like my father, for example. Uh, and so the message we got is to be powerful, to be the head of a family, is to be dangerous, destructive and violent. And I shied away from that with everything in my soul because I didn't want to do to people what my what happened to my mother and my siblings and myself in, in my crazy household. Uh, and I and I work with lots of men who have that, who have the belief that if I step into my power uh, as a man, then I'm going to become hurtful uh, and damaging to the people in my life. Yes. And I, I shared that with you uh, as well, uh, different form. Uh, my, my father's form of abuse, forms of abuse were basically emotional abuse and verbal abuse and spiritual abuse, not not physical abuse. And uh, it still had the same kind of impact on me. And I'll share a very brief story about that, mm. uh, which is that when I was in my early 20s, my father came to me, he was still alive at that point, and he, he came to me and he said that he discovered that he felt really guilty because he had mm -hmm. vowed when I was born as the firstborn that he would never do to his children what his father had done to him, which was to physically abuse him. And he came, my father came to realize that even though he had never physically abused my brother or me, he had simply abused us in a different form because he didn't know what to do instead of that. He never healed his own traumas over having been physically abused. And so it got passed down to the next generation in a different form. Um, we're going to have to go to break in a, in a moment. Uh, and uh, so after this short break, we'll get to the heart of the matter 
uh, where my guest co-author of Power Tools for Men, a Blueprint for Healthy Masculinity, Rick Bronick and I will discuss key ingredients in a reimagined vision of healthy masculinity for the 21st century. Are you interested in evolving with the times and becoming all you can be? Don't you wish there was one place to find the latest information to help guide you through the process? I'm Gwilda Wiecka, host of Mission Evolution Radio TV. Join me on my mission to find the latest evolutionary knowledge and tools. The guests on Mission Evolution are leading experts in a wide variety of divergent topics including allopathic, holistic, and integrative medicine, epigenetics, enlightenment, quantum physics, meditative practices, environmental issues, spiritual evolution, trauma healing, and so much more. Mission Evolution Radio TV is aired worldwide through the Exxon Broadcast Network, Exxon TV Channel 32 on Simul TV. You can enjoy our archives of radio or TV shows with our compliments at www.missionevolution.org. Come see the amazing lineup of guests and topics. With more than 200 episodes to choose from, you're sure to find what you're looking for. Visit www.missionevolution.org. Welcome back. In the last segment, we delved into some of the most common root causes of confusion over what healthy masculinity is and isn't. And in this segment, my guest Rick Bronick and I will illuminate our perspectives on traits of healthy masculinity in today's world. So Rick, what's your vision of healthy masculinity and what are some steps men can take to embody those traits in fuller ways? Well, thanks for that question. Uh, my recently published book, Power Tools for Men, that you mentioned before, A Blueprint for Healthy Masculinity. My co-author, Leonard Shimchek, has been active in men's work for, for over 40 years as well. Oh, thank you. Let's, let's re, uh, before you do uh, go further, I mispronounced his yeah. name during the introduction. So please say it the right way again. Shimchek, right? Leonard, Leonard is, a, that's a Polish last name. My last name is also Polish for two Polish men born in Chicago. Somehow we ended up in a men's circle in uh, in uh, North County, San Diego, California, and and we were both writers. And so we decided to to write a book together, uh, based on his forty some years of being a therapist, focusing mostly on men's and men's issues, and me thirty five years of leading men's trainings around the planet. Uh, and we believe that we have a a roadmap, a blueprint that can help men move towards that state of fulfillment and healthy masculinity that we all want to have in the world. I'm absolutely certain that every man wants that. Every man has a sense that there's a purpose for, for us being on this planet, and but we don't know how to get there. So offering a blueprint is, help, is a great way. So for example, we have our CLASSICS model. CLASSICS is a acronym. The first C stands for connection. We talked about that um isolation well men can be connected with our own feelings our own bodies which we talked about in a a previous segment and and therefore connected with uh, our emotions and our relationships the second the l for classic stands for loving loving freely loving completely and that starts with loving ourselves every part of my shadow every part of who i am i want to love to value to elevate and then i can do the same for the people around me. I can't do it until I do it for myself. The third one is authenticity, uh, relating with accountability and integrity with the world. Being an authentic person uh, lights up the world and lights me up and lights you up, David. I see you as an incredibly authentic man. And we have spent time together in spaces where we have shared that. And, and it's phenomenal how it changes men, that opportunity to be authentic. Magical. Yeah, the next one is spirituality. 
I believe there's a spiritual malaise in our in our society and in our world. I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about a deep personal connection with something that is greater than ourselves. Again, we believe, Leonard and I believe, that every man has that hunger to have a deep, meaningful, spiritual connection with others. And how you do that is your business. But we really advocate for men to start a daily practice, some kind of spiritual practice, whatever that is. I meditate every single day. My partner does too. We meditate together and it's a beautiful connection. I've been meditating since I was seven years old, David. And oh, I, I, I didn't start until I was in my later teens. Yeah. And, and it's such a deeply grounding part of my life. And it reminds me every day of how grateful I am that I'm here. What a beautiful life I have. Uh, to touching into that, touching into the groundedness of my life so that when I hit the bumps and, and bruises that happen naturally in our lives, I can ride through them pretty unscathed. The next piece is healthy sexuality. Uh, sexuality and spirituality are so deeply connected, it's hard to separate them. But um, a man who has a healthy, respectful sexuality, practice, expression in life is a much help, happier man. And again, we don't advocate uh, for any particular brand of sexuality. That's for yours to discover for yourself. But we, we want you to have excess pleasure responsibly. Okay. The next one is having an intention. Intention is a word that we give to what's commonly called a mission, David. We mentioned that before, that men seem to have a deep sense when they look inside that they're here for some purpose and helping me find what my mission is, what my purpose on the planet is, helps guide my life in such powerful ways and beautiful ways. Saying my mission for myself, by the way, is, is part of my daily practice. And, and, and also I have a, a, a shadow, a leaden shadow mission that I say to myself regularly to remind myself of my capacity to be hurtful and destructive if, I, if, if I'm not careful. And let, before you go on, let me just for the audience yeah, yeah. say what lead and shadow is about. So we touched on what shadow is earlier. So the the notion of lead and shadow comes from the metaphor of alchemy, turning lead into gold. Right. So lead is the pre-gold form of what's meant to become golden. Keep going. Right. Exactly. And then and then you know my mission my mission of service is is an expression of my golden shadow, the beautiful part of myself. Uh, some that I used to hide, repress, and deny too. Oh, let let me uh, quickly before you keep going, touch on that briefly as well. So, uh, this notion of golden shadow, there uh, a lot of attention in the in the world of people who pay attention to shadow focuses on things that we've decided rightly or wrongly are negative about ourselves. So we've we've hidden them, but. The other aspect of shadow that, in my experience, is talked about less often, even though it should be talked about a whole lot more, mm -hmm. is golden shadow, which is parts of my light that I learned to hide, repress, and deny because I discovered that those parts of my life were uh, light, were too much for other people. Exactly. And, and that shows up for many of us. When I ask men about this, they all nod their head like, how many of you got messages that you're not so special? You think you're so smart. You think you're so talented. You think you're so beautiful. You think whatever it is that gets beaten out of us. It's the tall poppy syndrome is, is another name for that, where if you dare to, to, to own your brilliance, <laughs> you're in you're in deep doo doo in our society, especially as a man, especially as a man. Thanks for clarifying that, David. You know, uh, you and I have a, a deep appreciation for that expression of shadow. We do how we teach it and how we share it. Uh, I want to go on to the uh, seventh behavior is community. That's the, the last C in classic. And community means building a circle of men, being part of a circle of men. So we overcome that isolation. We overcome the terror of receiving feedback. We overcome the terror of having contact with men, of saying, I love you to men. I need you to men. Now, I know you've been in a men's group for a very long time. I've been in men's group nonstop for 34 years. And it's such an important part of my development as a man. It's where I go to get support in a lot of cases. It's where I go to be safe, to say whatever I need to say, to explore whatever aspect of my shadow I need to explore and have men love on me, uh, hold me accountable, 
make sure that I'm being vulnerable and so forth. That's so and important. For me, uh, I'm lagging behind you. I'm only yeah. 22 years into it. So yeah, uh, I, late to the party. Right. Well. And my co-author Leonard started a men's group or was part of a men's group in Australia where he was living at the time back in the, in the 1970s. And he mm. tells a story about it. He thought to himself, what the hell am I doing here with 60 other men sitting in a circle? I'm out of my mind, you know? And, and it soon became an important part of his life as well. The, yeah. last, the last behavior, we believe, is S, the classics. The S is sovereignty. And that is about fully developing, owning, and stepping into our authentic kingship our authentic and emperorship, if you like. We like to take it beyond the king to the emperor. And um, these eight classics behaviors can help us shift ourselves from toxic or unhealthy masculinity into a healthier expression of masculinity. And it blesses everyone around us, not just ourselves, our men in our men's group, women in our lives, our children, uh, people we work with in organizations. Uh, it is a phenomenal shift that can happen. Yes. I totally agree. I'm going to quickly reiterate each of the uh, words that are connected to the classics um, um, uh, acronym. And then I want to add a couple of additional things in the, uh, the time we have left in this segment. Uh, so the classics model, which I totally agree with and totally support, connection, loving, authenticity, spirituality, sexuality, intention, community and sovereignty and of course the the name of my center is the center for enlightened self-sovereignty well what do you know about that uh and so embedded in the things that you were just unpacking uh there are a couple of things i want to underscore yep. um facing our shadow and cleaning out uh cleaning up our traumatic residue so that we can function with authenticity getting clear about not just what our impact mission is in the world but what our soul growth mission is in the world um redefining ourselves as a third me a third we and a third us all uh, mm -hmm. being equally committed to personal authenticity collaborative connection with others and social responsibility uh developing our own vision of humanity's best future and enacting our impact mission to fulfill our unique role in helping that vision emerge without sacrificing our well-being or cherished relationships. Right. Using our power in ways that embody both, uh, both of the fundamental forms of love. There's nurturing without indulging or fueling entitlement, which uh, nurturing love is the feminine archetypal consciousness in all people and challenging love, challenging without shaming, which is the masculine archetypal form of love in all of us. Uh, and then um, becoming adept at integrating personal freedom, self-sovereignty and societal well-being and helping others do this too in our own unique ways so that we can, can finally diffuse societal divisiveness, political polarization and isms. Um, before we go to break, uh, how do those things sound to you? They sound wonderful, David, and they're all in concert. It's all about express expanding a man's options for how we can behave, how we can be in the world, how we can feel in the world. And I've noticed as I've done that in my own life, uh, my world has become so much easier, so much more joyful, so much more connected. I've, I've attracted an amazing woman into my life. I'm recently remarried and uh, uh, she's done that same work. And I know you know her and, and, and delighted her as well. And yes. wow, when, when we're working in partnership, and we've done our shadow work and we continue to do it. And, and, and life can be so fulfilling and so joyful. And, and we have this mission together of doing work in the world, working yeah. to end the isms, working to end poverty, homelessness. We do that regularly. And it's just so enjoy, joyful. Yes. And I, uh, as you know, I'm really blessed with that kind of relationship as well. Uh, so after a brief break will return for our episode's final segment, during which I will ask my marvelous guest, Rick Bronick, about his resources, more about his resources for helping men own and embody 
healthy masculinity. Are you ready to dive into the mysteries of the unknown? Tune into the electrifying X-Zone radio TV show hosted by the one and only Rob McConnell. I'm Rob McConnell and get ready for a mind-bending journey through the unexplained phenomenon that surrounds us all. From UFO encounters to cryptids, ghosts and everything in between, we've got it covered here in the X-Zone. Rob McConnell, the seasoned investigator and renowned radio personality, brings you the most compelling interviews with top experts, authors, and experiences from around the world. Each episode is an unforgettable exploration into the depths of the extraordinary. That's right, Exo Nation. Join me every week as we open the door to the supernatural and explore the strange and amazing stories that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. And it's not just radio anymore. With our groundbreaking TV show, you can now witness the sessions unfold right before your eyes. From chilling reenactments to captivating visuals, prepare yourself for a multimedia experience like never before. With a legacy spanning over two decades, the X-Zone Radio and TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, is your ultimate source for mind-blowing entertainment and thought-provoking discussions. Join our growing community of truth seekers as we continue to unlock the world's mysteries. So, why wait? Step into the X-Zone and embark on a journey that will challenge your beliefs, ignite your curiosity, and keep you on the edge of your seat. Remember, X-Zone Nation, the truth is out there, and it's waiting for you right here on the X-Zone Radio and TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't miss a minute of the action. Tune in now on your favorite radio station or visit xzoneradiotv.com to join the adventure. The X-Zone Radio TV Show with Rob McConnell, where reality meets the unknown. The X-Zone Radio TV Show, unraveling the secrets of the universe, one episode at a time. For more information visit www.xzoneradiotv.com. Before our final break in this episode, my my guest, leader, speaker, consultant, coach, multi-best-selling author, and my friend and colleague, Rick Bronick, described his vision of healthy masculinity in today's world. And in this final segment of this episode called Reimagining Masculinity, Becoming a Psycho-Spiritually Mature Man in the 21st Century, Rick will let us know more about his resources for helping men step into more fully healthy masculinity. And uh, we'll follow that with each of us sharing the big takeaways we hope you've gained from this episode and how to access Rick's resources, followed by my closing comments. So let's kick this off, Rick, with you telling us a little more about what you're doing and the resources you provide uh, above and beyond your your latest book uh, mm-hmm. to help men reimagine what it is to be a man and to actualize this during our troubled times. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Yes, um, we have a, a fabulous website called www.powertoolsformen.org, not .com, but .org. And there you'll find a wealth of information. Uh, uh, we have uh, a series of webinars that talk about the eight classic behaviors that I delineated in the last segment. Um, go into them in much more detail. Uh, and that's available. Uh, in fact, I'm off. My offer is a couple of those uh, webinars that I think will be most uh, enjoyable for men to have. Um, we have the book. We have uh, nine ebooks also that uh, talk about each of the uh, classics models. Uh, in addition, Leonard and I have a, a powerful and beautiful men's coaching program that help men activate in their lives these behaviors and notice the changes. Uh, in their relationships, in their workplace, whatever it is that they're suffering from, and uh, help men get into groups and get connected 
so they're no longer isolated. We do that coaching program as well. That's one important aspect of my mission work. The Another important aspect you mentioned earlier was my multicultural work. And I have another website that I'm partners with, www.wisdomwindfall.com. There you will see we are a training organization that helps organizations and individuals discover their missions and activate them, particularly in the realm of multicultural awareness. How do I bring this into a business uh, setting or a not-for-profit setting successfully? How do I in encourage all of my employees, all of my colleagues to be fully expressed uh, not too much different than the work we're talking about with men here, David, but that's also important to me. I have a deep uh, personal mission about ending the isms in, in my lifetime. Um, and uh, that's how I do it. I have two wonderful partners, Michael Bonahan, who's deeply involved in the Mankind Project as well, and Rhonda Schladen, who's an Afro-Caribbean woman, lives in the United States, is deeply involved in facilitation for women and uh, anti-race work. And we together provide uh, wisdom windfall uh, trainings and so forth. Both of those uh, are very dear to me. The book is foremost in my mind because that is focusing entirely on men and men's development, men's growth, and men becoming fully self-expressed uh, humans on this planet. Mm -hmm. I love the range of resources that you provide. And uh, I want to double back to one of those in a moment, but before that, I, I also want to honor the organization that you and I have been involved with for so long that's bringing a new generation of healthy masculinity to the entire planet. It's a, it's a nonprofit international organization that's been around in its current form since, give or take, 1990. Um, yeah, 1989. Uh, I first heard about its origins in 1985 mm -hmm. uh, when it was uh, the original form of its initiation weekend was called uh, Wild Man Weekends. Right. So wow. it took me 17 years before between when I first heard about this and when I finally joined the Mankind Project. Mm -hmm. So if those of you uh, who are listening to this are interested in the Mankind Project's work, the international website for that is very simple. Mankind Project, the abbreviation is MKP. So it's mkp.org, mkp.org. Absolutely. Uh, it's a phenomenal organization. It's probably the largest men's organization on the planet right now, offering all kinds of trainings an initiatory training at the beginning, and then leadership trainings, multicultural awareness trainings, and so forth. And it is the organization that really opened my eyes to my lack of, of healthy masculine power and helped me develop it and work on it. And I continue to, David, with wonderful men like you. Um, I've, I had the privilege just uh, three weeks ago of leading a training here in San Diego, where there was 110 men total in the container. We had 60 staff men, 30 participants, and about 15 men that were helping cook and care for us. Think about that. More than two to, or a two to one ratio of staff to participants. And those men, those staff men, pay their own room and board and their travel to get there and serve uh, on a, a long weekend. It starts on Thursday and ends on Sunday afternoon. It's really a remarkable- Well, for staff men, it starts on Thursday. For staff men, it starts on Thursday. For participants on Friday. Uh, it's a really remarkable experience. I'm, I'm privileged to be able to lead those trainings. I'm privileged to work with uh, beautiful uh, men such as yourself as an elder on the weekend and many, many other men that staff and participate around the world. And what a gift, what a huge gift in my life. So yes, come to the Mankind Project, men. Come experience authentic masculinity in a, in a training place. And then we have ongoing uh, care for men, we call them integration groups or I groups, ongoing men's groups that break that pattern of isolation and uh, uh, competition with men, and we learn to cooperate together. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Thank you for that synopsis of all of the blessings that the Mankind Project is bringing to men around the world. Uh, before I go into my closing remarks, which will include a review of your resources, 
Mm -hmm. I first want to uh, take a moment for us each to share what we think are this episode's most valuable takeaways. So uh, as my guest, I'd love for you to go first. What what do you see as the most important takeaways from this episode? Well, thank you, David. Yes. My most important takeaway for me is that men are in crisis in many ways, but there's lots of hope. There are healing modalities and ways for men to become more self-realized, more awakened and more fulfilled in their lives and bring a more fulfilled experience to their families, their friends, their businesses and the world. That when men claim their mission of service and decide that they're going to heal uh, these old, old shadows that bedevil most of us about isolation and competition and not valuing our bodies, we can emerge as these noble, incredible, beautiful men that I love working with. I love men so much. I am so proud of men. I'm so grateful to see men that are willing to do the difficult work to transform. And mm -hmm. that's, that's as I take away that there is hope for us. Big hope. Yes, I totally agree with that. And uh, for me, the big episode takeaway is that if, if you're confused about what healthy masculinity is, you're far, far, far from alone. And masculinity is only toxic when we don't know what this is, what healthy masculinity is, or how to step into it, and, or how to help others step into healthy masculinity. And I'm bringing that up uh, because there's a lot of attention given right now in the media to this notion of toxic masculinity. Masculinity isn't toxic. No. Toxic expressions are toxic, but masculinity is not toxic, not healthy, mature masculinity. No, not at all. Just the opposite. So that's the uh, the takeaway that uh, that's precious to me from this episode in addition to your takeaway. So again, you can order the book, Power Tools for Men, A Blueprint for Healthy Masculinity, and all of Rick's thank you gifts at powertoolsformen.org. And there, there are a bunch of, of thank yous that you can access um, two webinars and the ebooks and handouts that accompany them. Uh, the, the webinars are called Build a Life of Connection and Build a Healthy Sexual Life. Uh, and um, uh, the way to get access to those thank you gifts is to simply complete the contact form that you'll find at powertoolsformen.org. Um, also want to remind you about wisdomwindfall.com for corporate and nonprofit trainings in uh, in isms and the Mankind Project, the international website being mkp.org. Uh, my, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with my work, you can apply to join the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty to step into the age of spiritual self-sovereignty that serves us all for leaders, influencers, enterprises, and concerned citizens. And you can discover the benefits of becoming a free member at thecess.com, the T-H-E-C-E-S-S.com. I'm deeply grateful to this episode's marvelous guest, masculine maturity thought leader, Rick Bronick, for being a trailblazer who's providing valuable resources to assist men, leaders, businesses, and other enterprises, and all of humanity in actualizing a positively uh, powerful, reimagined future. So, Rick, uh, before I make my closing comment, I want to thank you for joining me for this episode. It's been a real pleasure. Me too. What fun. Oh, I'm glad. And I want to thank all of you for joining us for this episode of Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours. Remember to visit me online at drgruder.com, D-R-G-R-U-D-E-R.com, where, among other things, you'll also find a link to join the Center for Enlightened Self-Sovereignty. Links are also available on this show's website, which I really encourage you to visit in order to watch all of our 
prior episodes of Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours. And that website is RHFY, the abbreviation for Reimagining Humanity's Future and Yours, RHFY.ca, not .com, not .org, .ca for Canada. And I will be back again in two weeks with another spellbusting, uplifting, and actionable episode. Thanks for joining us today.